Oh, hello. You've got me in the process of turning off the small fan at my feet, which I forgot to do, but I should probably for sound. I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of Playbill, and you are tuned in to today's episode of Stream Stealers, the talk show where I get to talk to some of my favorite film and TV people about their projects, all of whom have perhaps surprising theater backgrounds. And today, my very special guest is Mr. Harry Lloyd, who is in Peacock's new series, nine episodes. It's an hour long, if you won't notice it. Uh, Brave New World, based on the Alice Huxley dystopian novel. Although, what is a dystopia in 2020? We'll get into that. Uh, he's also done a lot of theater in London, in the UK, and uh, a couple of shows that you might have heard of, something on HBO, I can't remember. I think it was Sex and the City. Uh, anyway, Mr. Harry Lloyd. Hi. Hello. How's it going? Uh, so you're on holiday. Yeah, excuse the wallpaper. I was explaining to Mark just prior, I wanted to do something in the garden. I'm in this lovely cottage in the Cotswolds in like the middle of England. It's all very quaint. And now it's suddenly got really dark and there was no light. And I was trying to do something with a candle before I realized this is live. And so now I'm in the spare room. I'm gonna be honest, when you first joined me before we went live sitting outside, it had the feel of, oh, I'm absolutely going to watch like Jason or Michael Myers yeah. slowly walking from the background closer and closer and then just murder yeah. a full <laughs> situation. Um, in fact, even I'm gonna make this more stable. If I don't like that. Uh, okay. Congratulations on one on being on holiday. And two, on Brave New World, which is fantastic. I, I'm so glad you liked it. You said you spent a whole day watching it. Yeah, I did all nine episodes, texting everyone. You, did, you didn't stop, you just went straight through single uh, arc. There was no break. I don't know anyone who's done that. What's that like? Uh, it was, well, you know, early on I thought, is this a dystopia? Like the government has set some rules in place for everyone's safety and everyone follows them and they're all happy. This is, I think, a good place to begin, is that, yeah, this dystopian looks pretty great to me. I mean, they're distracted by sex and drugs and entertainment all the time, so they can't question anything, and everyone's super happy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, it's not completely ridiculous, right? Well, especially like in 2020, to like flip through the news or be on Twitter <laughs> while you're watching Brave New World, you're like, yeah. you don't even know what a dystopia is. This is your yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, your character, um, uh, uh, Barnard uh, Marks, I don't know why I just turned into Marion Davies with a stutter there. Uh, it's okay. I think that his problem ultimately was just too many turtlenecks. You know what, it has been said, that was one of the first questions I got asked on this whole uh, uh, no, really? thing, where someone said, it takes a real man to pull off the beige turtleneck um have you ever tried it in your own life and i was like whoa i, I was prepared for like questions on the book and all this night i just, i was totally thrown and i i can't remember what i said i think i said i know that i am not but i think bernard might be <laughs> I, just, I just i was floored he, that's my achilles heel it's true he was a lot of turtlenecks there were so many turtlenecks and what i think is I mean, look, we can, I, I don't want to get too too into the minutia of what is different from the book versus what is different in the series, because I think one of the great joys of watching this, especially if you do it in a binge fashion, is seeing how very smartly they have taken the premise of the original Brave New World and made it much, much more for our times. But I, what I, I think one of the smartest yeah. things in this boil term cast you is in the book, uh, Barnard is short. And so that's like, oh, he's he's upset because he's a shorty. And you're you bring something else where he's really he really has just been mislabeled in some way, which is a whole other like gender identification conversation of 2020. And he just his whole demeanor is more beta than alpha, which is a whole other conversation. But what was was that already in the script when you joined or was that something that they tweaked when you were cast? Happily, his height was not referenced in the script <laughs> at, at any point. And I looked closely. 
uh, I am a couple inches taller than Bernard in the book, for sure. So it wasn't an easy way of saying, well, he's an alpha plus, but he doesn't look like an alpha plus. We didn't make it that simple. Not that I am, you know, necessarily as uh, Adonis-like as someone like Henry Foster, uh, played by Sen. Uh, but he said there's something about he could be an alpha plus, but there's just something not about him. And even, even in the betas kind of laugh about it. Even Franny's like, you want, you want to go to the Savage Lands of Burnett? Everyone says his embryo was mishandled. In the book, I think it was an alcohol poisoning or something. But either way, like you say, the premise, the philosophy is shared. M all, pretty much all the characters, the basic architecture of the story. But the novel's not really a novel, I think, to be honest. It's an essay. It's a fascinating portrait of a time and a place with a few characters to lead us through it all. But it begins with the director of the world giving a tour to school children, showing you the hatchery. And you're like, that's what you want. It's fascinating. But it's not emotionally involving. These characters are not driving the story. They're puppets of something larger. And we play with that with our introduction of Indra. That's, I guess, how we did it. But it's we made it into a you know, a, a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Aldous Huxley, well, he's blind, so he can't see you right now, uh, but he would be furious if he could, if he could tune into this. I don't think so. I mean, possibly. I, I didn't know the guy, but I... I did, we were very good friends in LA. Oh, uh, well, you tell me. Maybe he would be. Oh, no. He would be so upset because he oh, had a dear. Kind of vision for it. Right? Oh, dear. I know, I know. Well, I mean... We could probably uh, take it off soon. There's just, uh, God, I, I really could spend all 30 minutes talking to you about this series, which uh, I never do. But wow. I have to talk about the insane chemistry that this cast has. Because cool. it, you and Jessica Finley-Brown as Lenina are so, there's a moment where you're rooting for like a will they, won't they thing, and then that is quickly out the window, and then you want them to be friends. And then you just want them to not hate each other. And there's, you took me on a real roller coaster of emotions, the two of you. I mean, that, I've got to say, that is why I loved reading it and loved doing it as much as I did. Because it was this, actually, the story is quite simple in terms of actually what happens overall. There's all kinds of stuff happening, but it, 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 I didn't, it's not like Westworld where you really got to watch it again and check Wikipedia afterwards. and. It, <laughs> It, 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 it's like, not bear in mind, I love Westworld, don't get me wrong, but I, uh, so in terms of a re the relationships, however, are super complex and you do, you're engaged and you want them to, but there's this weird triangle at the heart of it. That's how it was always described by David Wiener between John and Lena and Bernard. And it's not simply a love triangle because there's really interesting complications on each side of this shape. And actually, when the series is about so much, that is the thing at the heart of almost every scene. There's, a, there's a, like a meta mega story happening over to the top of it all, I suppose. But in terms of at the heart of it, I think that's what made it really fun to play because you think this story's safe. I'm just gonna go to town and see how much more weird and interesting and human can I make these scenes for these people who don't even really know exactly what it is to be human. And so me and Jesse and my scenes with Alden, we just threw it around and just, and this script could just go all sorts of places. It wasn't really clear how you were meant to do it. And so it was, yeah, it was really fun. No, I mean, and I have to also shout out, um, and the name has just flown out of my head, uh, but the woman who played Wilhelmina. Oh yeah, right, Hannah, yeah. That that whole transforming that character from a, from a male writer into a female, it makes so much more sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. And the whole emotion thing, and there were shades of the giver were there, which I always appreciate. Okay. And to quote another dystopian. I'm a big dystopia fan. Clearly, yeah. Uh, but no, I just think, I think it's such a smart, well done series. And all of you are delivering heartbreaking performances, but also clearly having a ball getting to play with one another in this way. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest, that's pretty much it. <laughs> you summed it up nicely. I mean, I really thought something so worthy because it's based on this book, especially in America, everyone had to read it in high school. So it comes with mm, a certain ability, but also a certain resentment. Uh, so we actually kind of dismantled both of those things, uh, I hope. 
And it shouldn't have been as much fun as it was. But the fact that it was, and the way that, especially in the middle of the series, it kind of goes sideways without spoiling anything. We start to have a lot of fun with this society when John is, when I'm trying to introduce John ultimately to it and help him become a, a new Londoner. Then you really find out a lot about both the Savage Way and the uh, the New London Way. And it's a, it's a kind of sometimes very simple culture comedy, which again, I did not expect when I signed up for it. No, I mean, that's, there was never an episode where I knew where the episode, where the arc would end up at the end right. of that episode, or even right. what the tone of that episode would be. It's to yeah. see. Yeah, 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 yeah. But through the one consistent thing throughout that series was that tight, tight hair of yours. Well, yes and no, I'll be honest, Mark. There are some times it was tight, and sometimes, despite all our best efforts, I have hair made of a combination of kind of rope thread and toilet brush it's so thick that you can't tame it and every job i do is the same when i'm meant to have like slick like back hair we spray it we do it and there are times that what i actually watching it i really enjoy the burn it when he gets a bit flustered in his turtleneck you know it starts to come down a bit and he starts to not look like an alpha plus and even though we did everything we could to try and make him look perfect all right through, you know life finds a way you know, that's what the show's about. You can't keep humans in a box and keep them happy. They're not meant to be happy all the time. That's not how we're built. You know, no. and the hair, the hairline, just the same. <laughs> um, well, and then some people are uh, chiming in and asking questions, which is lovely. Who are these uh, people? Uh, someone loves you in counterpart. You're amazing. Sweet. Uh, what do you think about the use of Soma in the novel show? Would you take Soma if it were available? How's it? Oh wait, let me, sorry, let me think. Yeah, definitely. Because Soma is not like some drug that's gonna trip you out necessarily. It's designed to just bring you back to your perfect center of happiness. So if you stub your toe, take a blue. And if that guy looked at you strangely, maybe take a green. If you're a counselor like Bernard, you get the orange and the yellows. So, you know, and if you're like Helm, you take an orange and a yellow together, then you might have a little trip. Uh, but it's they're pharmaceutically kind of perfect. I would definitely give that. I should have I should have opened the interview by asking about your levels. How are your levels today? Here? Dude, you know what? My levels are better than they were at the start of the interview, for sure. How are yours? Great. You only took uh, two uh, blues and then an orange. So that uh, yeah, no, no, the orange is just kicking in now nicely. So one of the things when uh, when your name came up as a possible guest for the show, one of the reasons I got very, very excited is you starred in the West End premiere of one of my favorite comedies of all time, The Little Dog Laughed. Ah, oh, sweet. I love that play. It is such a great play. It's and so funny. I read some interview, I felt so bad for you, where all you had all these American agents coming to see you. <laughs> Very about how horrible American agents are. Yeah, because it, it was at the same time as Game of Thrones. So they, the American agents start sniffing around. And I was like, oh, well, you can come and see me in this play. It's about this tyrant American agent abusing their client, basically. Uh, and so it was always very interesting. They'd come to the dressing room and I'd be like, what do you think of the play? And they were always quite embarrassed. <laughs> but um, but they were the ones that, and actually the people that I signed with, they were brilliant because they, uh, they laughed with it and they were like, yeah, that's the fucking lily, right? You know, and they, uh, excuse and my language. Because guess what? Diane is not a bad agent. She's a brilliant agent. That you, you want to uh, test that with uh, Diane I, from me. Yeah, I mean, you're, you want your agent to go to bat for you and to be a vicious bulldog and then come to you and be sweet puppy. That's, that's kind of, I don't want to see any of the blood, but you know, do what you got to do. <laughs> That's yes. That's what we all want. We all want a bulldog to like take care of all the carnage while we sit yeah. back and on holiday yeah. in the Cotswolds. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I met at a very strange, obscure party that I shouldn't have really been at in uh, L.A. Saw Johnny Galecki at the bar, who played at Alex. Is there? I think it is Alex. Alex, the rent boy from Little Dog Laughed. He did the New York premiere of the show. And I'd just done the kind of London transfer, I guess, as it were, and played the same part. So I remember kind of coming up to him and being like, oh, hi, Johnny, I, uh, I, I just, I played the Rent Boy, and you, you played the Rent Boy, and, and you know, I did that classic thing that you do when you're like, I haven't got enough material here. 
and I'm just gonna, he's going to just watch me. And he was very polite and nice, but it just dried up as it should. And, you know, we went our separate ways. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was one of the few shows that I've seen multiple times on Broadway. Oh, and really? I did get to see the UK production, but Julie White, one of the best comedic performances. I heard, I heard that, that performance was, I mean, we were so lucky. We got Tamsin, great. Who oh, my God, yeah. But I heard that Julie was like, uh, a hailstorm. I mean, Julie, I got to interview Julie back then. Oh, she cool. said, I mean, well, I tell those boys every night, you better not piss me off because if you do and I miss my cue, it's full on blowjobs for both of you. You know what? We did on the last night, Tamsin did that. There's a moment in that classic scene, I've got to run to the bed with no clothes on and get under the covers. And I got under the covers and then she's going to, at one point, playfully tugs at the covers. And, I, and on the last night of our whole Western run, Oh man, she yanked, I swear, as hard as she could. And I'm like literally fighting for my life on the West End stage. I mean, like, don't, don't, tam 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 it was, yeah. She's strong. <laughs> so, what was it like doing that simultaneously with Game of Thrones? Like, those are two very different. Yeah, it was a crazy year. It was about 2010, 11. I think I filmed Game of Thrones and maybe it was about to come out. I don't think people yet would knew about it or hadn't become this global thing yet, but it was just, yeah. like, I, I was in a show on HBO, it was brilliant. Um, and yeah, and so um, I was doing this four-hander play with like three celebrities. We had Gemma Arterton, Rupert Friends, Tamsin Gregg, and Alex the Rent Boy, Harry Lloyd. <laughs> so I was kind of like a starstruck teenager, frankly. Although, one of the most interesting things about doing that play, I was in New York before we did it, and I got in touch with a, a rent boy uh, who was and so interesting and wealthy and told me about this whole fascinating secret life so I could turn up at rehearsals with, uh, you know, something to kind of share that other people at least didn't know. And, you know, and then we could, you know, talk about the play. And Douglas was there, and the whole thing was just... Uh, Oh, I felt super lucky to get that job. And then, and then Game of Thrones premiered, and you ended up at Hollywood parties with Johnny Galecki. Yeah, well, then you know, I mean, Johnny used to then rub shoulders down at the, you know, in California, and uh, well, the rest is history. Uh, and then I have to talk about uh, because I, I, well, first of all, I watch everything, and second of all, I I'm obsessed with Anna Friel. And you got to work with her yeah. on uh, Marcella. Yeah, yeah. What an interesting show that was. I, yeah, I had such a weird time on that. I loved it. I'm, I'm really digging your career where you're just like, oh, what is the most fucked up story? Yes, this, yes. Put me in it, put me in coach, put me in. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yes, ultimately, sure. I mean, Marcella, I've got to say, I read the first three scripts and I was like, this is just like top crime, everything. And I'm not into that sort of stuff on the whole. And I loved it, but I didn't know when I started it where it was going or yeah. who the murderer was. And it's very, it's like hundreds of people in it. And it was just this brilliant portrait of like under side of London and this fascinating kind of murder trail. And me and Anna, uh, it got on great, and at the end, we had we had more to do with each other. At the end of the season, uh, I kind of finally got to kind of talk to her more because the rest of it, she was pulled in all these different directions. Oh, she's brilliant. Yeah, and that's a great if guys. If you have not seen it on Netflix, like track it down. It's really worth. It's watching. yeah. It's that is one of the darker ones for sure. Yeah. Well, and Brave New World underneath its gloss of. Uh, well, that's yeah. Like, it is quite messed up underneath it, and especially I think it changes a lot from the beginning to the middle and to the end. The, where it ends up is, yeah, it's pretty raw. I, uh, I love that about it. Well, and I love, I love the ending that uh, your character got in particular. Oh, sweet, uh, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. I have to tell you, I did not recognize Demi Moore. Good. Until the second episode. Also, great, great. She was amazing. I thought it was John's sister. I mean, the, yeah. Like, oh, that's his sister. She's a drunk. And I was like, yeah. interesting. Well, I mean, first of all, that didn't take a lot of work. She looks phenomenal. Uh, when I, yeah, 
Um, you see, in real life, you're like, oh, hi, to me more from 1990s movies such as Ghost. Hi. It, there's no kind of, you know, I'm sure that in time people, you know, there's no, she's, a, she's amazing. And she, we got on great, actually, I have to say, even though I was quite nervous about meeting her, is because she became um, not just best friends, but slightly obsessed with my dog because she has like between seven and nine dogs in LA and she couldn't have them with her when we were, she was in Wales. And my dog is from, is a little uh, ponchi from New Mexico actually, where I got her. And so we were talking about air travel for dogs and this and that. And by the end of her filming, I would come back and be like, where's Zoe? And they were like, oh, Demi took her for a walk. And I'd be like, oh, great, okay. I'm sure she didn't know that. And then one day she walks <laughs> straight to the airport. You have never seen that dog again. Yeah, but you know what? She has a better life now. <laughs> I mean, you are the others. All the other dogs that she's stolen from other jobs is what she does. She's like Cruella. <laughs> <laughs> I love this story for Demi Moore. I'm going to do my damnedest to make this. <laughs> um, okay, we have to wrap up, unfortunately. But I want to ask uh, my favorite question, which is, what have you been watching during quarantine? Yes. I saw that you asked Gail that when I watched the interview earlier today. And I thought, okay, I've been watching a lot of all over the shop. First of all, I've watched probably the most hours spent watching Peppa Pig and In the Night Garden. But that's only because, I mean, that's just you know, my daily routine. Sure, Harry. The sure. thing that's, and also it's so bingeable. I um, I tell you what, I mean, the first, one of the best things I saw was The Last Dance, hands down. I, just, I thought that was a piece of one. I loved it. And my wife yeah. is from Northbrook, which is where the training ground is. And so it's like, she knew what she used to like, run into Jordan's wife in the supermarket. Oh, wow. It, oh, so I got the inside scoop and it was, a, I was, I had no idea. I didn't know why they were the greatest team in the world ever, but now I do completely. <laughs> um, but the most, the weirdly, the most standout lockdown viewing experience I had was with my wife. We decided to do the Gerard Butler trilogy, Olympus, London, Angel Has Fallen three nights in a row and you know what what a journey uh, I, I, I that's the thing that stands out most i don't know why it, I, it, it's it's it wasn't normal it was definitely covid viewing but it's uh, he does something that no one else can do it's he saves the president among many other people he saves the world Over. like every weekend and yet he's just so regular you know He's such a family guy. You know, uh, uh, I, love, I love this weird subgenre of action movies where it's like, I'm just a dad who oh, kick your ass. Yeah, don't touch my daughter. Oh, but if you don't, it will get on fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I appreciate that. Liam Neeson really spearheaded that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's kind of, yeah, he's got that down. Yeah. Um, Harry Lloyd. I'm so happy that you are as uh, wonderful as Brave New World is. Oh, wow. what a nice thing to say. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. No, please. I'm so delighted that you were able to. And I'm so happy that it prompted me to sit and watch all of Brave New World. I'm so glad you did. And thank you for watching it all. I, I'm very proud of it. No, I please. I will watch as much as I can that is available before I talk to somebody. Because if you're kind enough to come and talk to me on vacation, at like nine o'clock at night, then I'm going to- Well, you know, it's now pitch black. We would have, it would have been a very different conversation if we oh, sat in the yeah. garden. You know what, we, just, we would have just told ghost stories. It would have been super creepy, but maybe quite fun. Maybe yeah. next week. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be back in London next week. It won't be oh, <laughs> never mind. We've missed our opportunity. This is our chance. This was it, this is our window. So I loved it. Uh, I loved it too. Uh, thank you. Harry Lloyd, uh, anybody watching uh, this right now, Brave New World is on Peacock. Uh, I think that you can watch the first two for free. And well, all of Peacock is free, but with commercials. So you have to weigh up the pros and cons of sitting through commercials. Is it worth it? I can't say. Uh, and then tune in on Thursday when I will be working my way through the UK still with Ben Miles, two time Tony nominee, who is currently on Peacock's The Capture. Uh, all right. Thank you, Harry Lloyd, and thank all of you for watching. Until thank next you, time. Take care.